movie that we are unfortunately have to sit through because we need content. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry, that is correct. We had to sit through this. What? How long was this movie? Two hours? This two hour movie? Uh, and yeah, it was it was disappointing. Ragnarok was way, way better. It wasn't as bad as people said though. Like people said this movie was really, really, really bad. Like everything yeah. was bad in this movie. There was nothing good in it. It wasn't that bad, it was okay. It's watchable. You can enjoy some parts of it. It just feels kind of pointless in the middle section and kind of a bit jarring with the tonal inconsistencies, that's all. If I had to rate out of ten it would probably be a six or a seven seven tops, maybe six point five. Ragnarok is a definite 8 or a 9. The first two, two are probably about 5 or a 6. IMDb actually said that um, For All Love and Thunder is the worst core movie out of all four of them. And I would definitely disagree. It was an okay movie, but as Harry said, the tonal inconsistency was a problem. I think Gore did sound kind of different at times. I mean, I meant, uh, yeah, as well as that, as the fact that, like, um, by the way, spoilers from this point onwards, if you haven't watched the movie yet, watch it before you come here, so yeah. Um, Jane has cancer, so you have, so there's this one scene like right at the end where you have um, thingy, um, Thor visiting Jane when she's in the hospital, literally about to die, she, she might die like any minute, and then he proceeds to literally just go and make a joke with uh, Valkyrie, like it doesn't okay, make much sense. Okay. okay, Harry, let's start from the beginning. Then we'll get back to that scene, <sighs> and you can you will be the one to explain that scene. Very so it well. With, it starts with Gore and his daughter Love in the stranded in the middle of the desert, trying to find food and water to survive. They're the last of their species, and yeah, they the just just like a side note. Who names their daughter Love? That is very much true. Continuing. <clears throat> Uh, what was I about to say? Oh yeah, so Gore, I mean, <laughs> Gore and Love's effort to find food and water is, yeah, it's not going well, and it's not going well, and um, they're about to die. So um, afterwards, Love apparently dies, and Gore is somehow in a forest, and he finds some water, drinks from it, and somehow meets the god he was worshipping during the time he was suffering from lack of food and lack of water, Rapu, which I think is the god of light or something, or the god of the sun. Probably, yeah, god of the sun. Yeah, so he was, um, Gore prays to Rapu, he worships Rapu, and he is, um, proud to be his humble servant. Well, not for long. Yeah, Rapu dismisses him and mocks him, and then basically... Gore reveals, uh, Gore hates and denounces him, and uh, Raku, Raku gets a little tiny bit annoyed. Yes, and apparently, before Gore came, Raku killed a guy who was trying to kill him using the Necro Sword. This weapon that can kill gods. Yeah, and basically, uh, the Necro Sword calls to Gore in his dying moments, and then, yeah, Gore kills Raku, and I think there was some power gods or something that ran away. I don't know. <laughs> they're kind of irrelevant, they're just kind of sitting there. Yeah, they only appear in, one, in a couple of scenes. Or like, Literally yeah. just that first scene. They're yeah. just there. Yeah, and they don't appear, and they don't appear in the movie afterwards, I'm pretty sure. And, so, okay, so uh, Gore, once Gore kills Raku, he gets visions uh, of the sword, and for his voices of the necro sword telling him what to do, to basically to kill the gods and go to eternity, which is a being... A that could, um, Grant any it, person their wish, but only the first person to visit it. So, like, if you visit Eternity second in line, no, you don't get a wish. Only the first person that visits Eternity gets a wish, which in itself is kind of dumb, but you know. Which kind of feels weird because couldn't have couldn't uh, thought you existed. Couldn't they have used that to um, in Endgame to defeat Thanos instead of Black Widow and Iron Man having to die? But then again, they had to uh, Robert Dooney, uh, Robert Dooney, <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. and uh, what was her name, Scarlett Johansson, as and um, Chris Evans lost their contract. Their contract was about to end, so they had yes, they had no choice. But still, couldn't they have just gone to Eternity and made it a lot simpler? 
Okay, ending squash is one. So basically, um, eternity, how you get to eternity, is essentially that you um, can use the Bifrost, which, if you forgot, you can use Stormbreaker to access the Bifrost, and Gore later uses Stormbreaker to get to eternity. Okay. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah. So after okay, Gore, so... Gore pledges to kill all gods for no real reason, um, because of yeah, the Necrosword yeah. corrupting him. Other than just to follow what the Necrosword said. Anyway. I'm getting, I'm getting Wonder Vision. Uh, I'm getting, I'm getting Doctor Strange flashbacks. <laughs> and <laughs> so the credit, I mean not the credits, like the beginning Marvel thingy rolls. The beginning Marvel <laughs> thing. <laughs> the thing where it says like all the bunch of seeds are blowing and it's uh, all red for some reason. Yeah. Because, yeah. because Marvel is That's, red. Yeah, that blows. And, and there's some weird music to, uh, oh no, what was the music playing? What was, what was the music playing? It, was, it wasn't the, 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 It was, it was just a jazz version of it. Oh yeah, it was. So yeah, that, that was actually kind of cool actually, yeah. Why are we talking, oh yeah, what, why are we talking like literally 10 seconds about what the, <laughs> the, what was it, the credits, the title credits thingy. Anyway, after, so basically, um, Thor is with the Guardians of the Galaxy. And he is, well... Actually, the beginning of the movie starts with Korg narrating oh, yeah. the story of a space pirate. His name was Thor. And so we learn what happens after Endgame. Essentially, Thor has just been hanging out with the Guardians of the Galaxy, getting fit, you know, that kind of jazz. And, yeah, he's just been living his life. But, you know, life's getting kind of boring. He's just saving the Guardians. He has nothing to do. Life's just kind of depressing for him. Yeah. You can see Thor sitting like on a tree looking at the sunset for some weird reason and then the Guardians of the Galaxy are calling on him for help because they have to defeat some um Because they're incompetent species and basically Thor uh, they're basically losing. Thor takes the ball down in like two seconds. Where do you expect the man to do? <laughs> there's some jazz there's some jazz song in the background or some song in the background. Uh, Taika Waititi's typical style, uh, playing random music while Thor does Thor stuff. In what felt like two seconds, uh, Thor gets thanks for his heroic deeds, and then and he also wreck he also wrecks their species as church for no reason. <laughs> and also he goes back to the Guardians of the Galaxy ship, aka the Milano. They aim to. Uh, solve more crimes because there's a lot of that happening. Except so, there's a grand mysterious thingy, what's it? You see Gore has been slowly killing off all the gods and Thor gets a distress call from his old friend Sif who we haven't heard from in years. The last time we heard from her was, was it even in Endgame or was it like in the dark, was dark world? I'm pretty sure it was in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Which isn't even <laughs> canon anymore. That That's very unfair. We should talk about that. We need to talk... They, they did not. They did. Agents of Shield did not deserve that kind of treatment. Harry, that's for another video, though. Um, <sighs> subscribe if you want, and turn on your notification bell if you want to hear that. Though. It helps okay. so very much when we have zero anyway, subscribers. Anyway, Thor parts ways with the Guardians of the Galaxy and finds his friend Sif, and she has her arm cut off for like no reason. And also, she's badly wounded. She is well healing, and then. Thor finds out that, um... Oh yeah, what was Sif doing for, like, the entire movie? Was she just healing? Like, Thor, yeah. Thor, Thor says he's gonna build up this grand army and he needs everyone he can get to defeat Gore. And then Sif's just like, well, I'm just gonna dip and just doesn't come in the movie for, like, the rest of it. <laughs> so basically, after Thor finds out what the, the, about the damage, um, Gore strikes some new, new Asgard and... There's some shadow, he creates some shadow monster beings which kidnap all the children! Even though he himself had a child and should know the pain of adults losing their children and therefore it completely disregards his character and makes him an incompetent fool. And also, it's kind of, he does that to bait the Thor into um, saving them. And so, yeah, he kidnaps the children, Thor saves the day by killing all the Shadow monsters, but the shadow monsters just out. grow into the ground after Thor, after Gore kidnaps them and leaves. The shadow monsters just go into the ground, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is where the sludge middle half begins. The section where absolutely nothing happens for a whole 
45 minutes. They literally just go to this god planet and get and get Zeus's thunderbolt to defeat Gore and it does the, the oh, thunderbolt sorry. does like nothing. I'm sorry, this movie is just so bad. <laughs> okay, Harry. Let me do the talking. Adapt it of jokes. I like what I was saying. Um, Thor defeats the Shadow Monsters, but there are too many of them. Not to, he has some help from the sisters of New Asgard, but well, it's the Shadow Beast is still pretty strong. But wait, there, Thor gets hung for another. Thor comes to defeat them. But it ain't uh, Thor Odin says, no, sorry, it's Jane Foster. Yeah, apparently she has terminal cancer, she has a stage four cancer, and she, um... Essentially, Mjolnir called to her and saved her from her cancer. Yeah, she has cancer, and it can't, she can't find a cure to cure herself of this cancer. Even though she's a doctor with, like, a PhD and, like, the smartest person in the Marvel Universe, apparently. Yeah, oh, uh, and also, couldn't, does she not know that she Chemotherapy, radiotherapy. Yeah, I learned about it in my uh, biology lessons. Um, also, like in a world with the Hulk, is there really no way to cure terminal cancer? Like genuinely? Couldn't they have, couldn't they have injected like um, some Hulk's blood into her? Blood? Yeah, it's it's been said that it has reached. I'm pretty sure it has regenerative properties. I'm sure it could help her in some way, shape, or form. Exactly. Um, and the Hulk is active, as we see in She-Hulk. He's kind of just hanging out at a beach somewhere. It's not like he's busy doing something. But that's besides this point. That That's beside the point. So after Mrs. Jane Foster and Mr. Thor defeat all of the Shadow Monsters, they realise that all of the children have been kidnapped and Gore has vanished. So their immediate first plan is to go to the God Planet place and they need to get... And Cole. And Cole. Don't they forget Cole. What to do upon Cole taking all of their children? And also, they discuss about the necklace sword being somewhat uh, real. And they. Write so what do you mean somewhat real? It is real. They uh, no, but apparently they, they call it a myth. And, and yeah, and they realize it is real, not that it's somewhat real. Uh, anyway, anyway, anyways, probably. Uh, is a, lot is, a, is a bit too much. Okay, so, um, Thor, Thor Jane Foster, and uh, Thor and Valkyrie, they all go to um, a magnificent city, the place where Zeus lives, to get help to defeat Thor, because Thor's already killed, killed some gods. He's going to kill, he, they think that he's going to kill their earth as well. Also, side note, Stormbreaker decides to uh, Stormbreaker tries to doom the entire universe because she, uh, she or he has a rivalry with Mjolnir. So basically, there's a side plot where Thor tries to get Mjolnir back, and Stormbreaker is really jealous. So it literally launches Thor out of the air and prevents him from accessing the Bifrost. Like, how petty are you? The fate of the universe is at stake. We'll we'll talk about uh, that. That actually is important, but we'll come back to that later. So. Thor, Borg, and uh, Thor, uh, Thor, Jane Foster, and Valkyrie. I'm just going to call it the Thor Gang. Right <laughs> Thor Gang. <laughs> Thor Gang. The Thor Gang venture to the god planet with screaming goats. Yeah, there's screaming goats in this movie. They venture to a myth, a myth, omnipotent city to warn Zeus and the other gods about Thor. And when they get to omnipotent city, they blend in so that they can talk. Zeus. But Zeus decides to do a flick. Zeus doesn't, uh, yeah, Zeus doesn't bother listening to them. He says that they are more safe if they stay here, but, and says that Gore is their problem. He refuses to help them, but Valkyrie and the plans to, they plan to steal his Thunderbolt instead, so that they can defeat Gore. So, yeah, Zeus flicks a bit too hard, and yeah. You know that scene in the trailer where Chris Hemsworth a bit, uh, Armorless, let's just say. Yeah. <laughs> Armorless. Yeah. Armorless. Yeah, anyway. So, uh, Thor, the Thor gang defeats Zeus's minions and they steal his Thunderbolt and uh, uh, Zeus actually uh, almost kills Korg. He basically turns him into like one head or one <laughs> face. And yeah, Thor strikes Zeus down and yeah, he's, yeah, basically, well, 
He literally just impales Zeus with his own thunderbolt. Like, <laughs> jeepers, man, calm down. And, and also, after you see the thunderbolt, they try and get into contact with the children. They try to do the Heimdall ability where they can. Because uh, also, Heimdall has a son called Astrid. Just. Uh, okay. Yeah, that is true. So, Heimdall Thor tries to get in contact with Heimdall and Heimdall's son and see where they are. And, um, yeah, they're stuck in some place called the, the Shadow Realm. Realm. That feels a bit cliche to Shadow Fight 3 and all the other Shadow Fight games. And also something related to some Japanese ninjas or maybe anime. Again, not, uh, again, that seems a bit cliche. I can see me, uh, again, I'm blaming you, but, um, let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> anyway, Thor finds out they're in the Shadow Realm. They get to the Shadow Realm, and Thor tries to rekindle his love with Jane. Peter with, with Will's advice. Will's advice. So, oh, yeah. And also, a Valkyrie and Korg talk about love. And so, uh, Thor tries to rekindle his love with Jane. But then Jane reveals she has terminal cancer. Yeah. And Thor is upset by this. And well, naturally. <laughs> naturally, he's then, upset that his ex-girlfriend has cancer. Yeah, I'm surprised that he didn't know it was cancer. And also... That he is his ex and she's his they ex haven't ex been in ex contact for like years. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was like anyway, eight they years. They their love, sort of, and they head and they finally arrive at the Shadow Realm where Thor is stuck. And then and Gore basically they, just crashes them and steals Stormbreaker. Yeah, they, but, they, but um, you can't forget about the black and white setting. It's oh, yeah, there's like a 10 minute, 5 minute thingy where they're just journeying about and it's in black and white for some reason. And apparently, Gore, apparently Gore wrote about a plan to get to eternity with Stormbreaker. Also, how would you get paid for a plan? Yeah, why would you write your plan down? What's the, are you going to forget your plan anytime soon? Also, like, how would you get paid for a pet? How do you get paid for a pet? Like, can you imagine, if he, if he literally just didn't write down his plan, literally, and he just stole Stormbreaker, Thor would probably just think that, you know, he's just trying to steal Stormbreaker so that I don't have it, and just completely yeah, like, ignore Gore. I swear, like, lots of villains, like, cliche villains write all their plans down or something. Like, like it's, it's not even like Gore wanted Thor to know. It was an accident that he knew. I mean, technically, it wasn't an accident. He, like, snuck up on them and captured um, all the, the three of the four of them. Yeah, but he didn't write his plan down to trap them in a trap. That just happened to happen. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, pretty sure he, I'm pretty sure he would have known that they were coming and, yeah. Wait, so, wait, moving wait. on, yeah, after Gore thrashes them, uh, we learn that using Mjolnir hurts Jane's ability to defeat the cancer even more, and so also, she shouldn't use it. Also, wouldn't it have been easier to go for Gore to kill them right there? There were literally two gods, two gods right there he, that he could have killed. And he and literally could have just taken the Stormbreaker for himself, but then, but he chose to leave them alive for literally no reason. But then, I thought he, he couldn't have, um, had Thor die because, well, he's the main character. You'd think that he would survive this encounter. I mean, so obviously, he's got to survive. There's still, like, 30 minutes of the movie left. <laughs> exactly. They had to leave Thor alive and make Thor seem like a sympathetic villain when he doesn't kill them. And by It's not sympathetic. They literally escape. He was trying to kill them. He almost killed them. Wait, did he? <laughs> yes. Do you not remember? He literally almost killed them, and the only reason he didn't was because they managed to escape. Somehow managed to escape. Yeah. And then and also, we get to the finale, where Thor... And also, whoa, 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 And also, I think pretty sure Gore had a sympathetic moment and thought, you and I are not so well, you and I are not so different, are we? We both are losing someone, we both are losing someone. So he said something about yeah. Um, anyways, moving on, after his short chat with um, Jane about her having cancer and telling her strictly not to come after him because it will require her to use um, Mjolnir, which will probably kill her. And then yeah. Valkyrie, who's just like really injured, but like doesn't help Thor because like, you know, the fate of the universe is at stake and she doesn't decide to help because she's like injured. Like, you oh, know. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, they got injured because they were fighting the war and they somehow, they somehow still managed to get really injured, even though it was like four and three v one. Sorry, Gorg, you didn't do much in that fight. It was a three v one, yet they still lost. And moving on, Thor somehow uh Thor, Thor uses loses Thor, Thor loses Stormbreaker and Jane would have got killed if he didn't summon Stormbreaker. He 
His love for her causes him causes him to summon Stormbreaker, allowing Gore to somehow escape, even though uh, somehow Stormbreaker sent Gore, uh, Stormbreaker sent Thor uh, crashing into a building, and yet uh, Gore it just listens to Thor just like that. I'm pretty sure okay, just to give some explanation. So essentially, Gore plans to use Stormbreaker to get to eternity, the god that will grant them the wish. So after, um, essentially what happens after their 3v1 against Gore is that um, Thor activates the Bifrost, then Gore steals Stormbreaker, and then Thor, and then Thor, Jane, and Valkyrie arrive on Earth, while Gore, plan, well, Gore, Gore prepares to go to eternity. And for like no reason at all, he brings the kids along. Well, we'll, we'll get to that. Yes, we're, we're at that point. She's dying pretty quickly. She's gonna die soon. So, yeah. Um, Thor is so angry, he, he decides to go off on his own to fight Thor, even though at the start they were agreeing on that they needed an army to defeat him. I mean, like, the and fate of the universe is at stake, it's all or nothing. Yeah, apparently he knows how to find Eternity by himself. And no, he doesn't. He plans to defeat Gore before he finds Eternity. Do you even remember this movie? Bosh, do you remember this movie? Yeah. Oh my days. I'm going to narrate the last bit because Bosh has just apparently forgotten everything about this movie. Okay. So, okay. so essentially what happens is Gore, uh, is Thor uses th the Zeus's Thunderbolt to um, basically get to Gore. And then Gore just apparently leaves all the children to die underneath the flying, uh, underneath the falling statue. Totally in line with his character being a father, letting all children die, am I right? And also, um, Thor frees the kids before they die, and then he allows, and then he, um, is, he needs an army to defeat Gore's shadow monsters. So apparently Thor's like, okay, fine. Only the worthy can achieve the ultimate power. They can achieve a Naruto power. <laughs> okay, but in actuality, what he does is he essentially asks the kids whether they're brave. They all say yes. And he just uses Zeus's Thunderbolt to give all of the kids the power of Thor. Like, leaving aside the point of how that kind of would have been useful in the past, how does he know he can do that? Like, if he could just give out the power of Thor to people, wouldn't that have kind of been useful, you know, for like, against Thanos, against Malekith, against anyone in general? <laughs> also, since it, couldn't he have done that before in the movie? He could have made um, Valkyrie and Jane go not a uh, Naruto mode, and wouldn't they have easily defeated Thor? But leaving aside that, um, uh, what's his name? Thor and Gore fights while the kids just trash a bunch of shadow monsters. Like, I know they have the power of Thor, but they're still untrained in it. Like, they're basically, they basically have the power, the training, and the experience of Thor all in one. Like, Thor decides to just 1v1 Thor, Gore, and he can just literally send an army of kids after Gore and literally trash him. <laughs> and also, for some reason, Thor achieve, also achieves the Naruto and yet he still loses. Literally the same as Ragnarok. He was uh, he got went non he went full Naruto mode, and he still was he still was just um, completely dominant. How how it was the music? How did the music fail him? He should have trashed to go with the music. No. <laughs> also, uh, couldn't Stormbreaker technically have stopped sending the power across to Eter to open eternity? Yeah, Stormbreaker is just kind of chilling there, just opening the portal to eternity, like. It, it's it's established in this movie before that Stormbreaker can control whether or not he slash she can, can can actually open the Bifrost or not. And yet now Stormbreaker just openly just for some reason lets the thingy open. Yeah. Uh, this is going a bit too far. Let's just finish this off quickly. So the movie wraps up with Jane arriving in full force, defeating uh, breaking Gore's Necro Sword, and then Gore just scrambles up to get to Eternity and kill all gods. Jane is kind of dying, so she just kind of sits there, and then Thor's like, well, I can't I can't possibly defeat Gore, even though he no longer has the Necro Sword, so he decides to try and defeat Gore by appealing to his better nature. So he goes to Eternity, and Gore is about to make his wish to Eternity, and then, like, uh, Gore, uh, Thor, uh, why, why did they make it so that Thor and Gore rhyme? It's so annoying to say. Thor asks Gore to, instead of wishing for all gods to die, to wish for his daughter to come back. 
So his daughter, his daughter dying was essentially the catalyst of everything that's happening. But like, since he's no longer on the, on the, the control of the Necro Sword, why doesn't he just wish for that in the first place? Like, the Necro Sword wanted him to wish for all gods to die, but like, the Necro Sword is no longer controlling him. So can't he just wish for you know, Gabe's daughter, but to be back? Harry, just continue the thought. Okay, so then Thor just says, you don't want hate, you want love. And then Thor and Gore just magically is like, okay, and wishes for his daughter to come back. And Gore just dies. Like, I don't know how he dies. He just dies, like, tiredness or something. I'm pretty, no, 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 no. Yeah, Gore died because he had injury. He didn't have the necrosaur to make him all Naruto, though. So, oh, yeah, he was just a normal human alien, human, an alien being. Technically, he got, oh, he, uh, Valkyrie hit him on the side, basically impaled the Thunderbolt on the side of his neck earlier on. And it was only because the Necrosword that he survived. So, like, if his injuries immediately take effect, immediately after the Necrosword die, it breaks, he should be dead. But moving past that, yeah, he wishes for his daughter to come back. He dies. Thor takes love, Gore's daughter, under his wing, and then the movie ends. Yeah, and Thor ends the narrating saying they were known as love, Thunder being Thor and Love being Thor's daughter. I think they know that. So, yeah, this movie was okay, Something. I guess. It's definitely not the worst. The MCU was pumped out recently. That award would probably go to Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness or She Hulk. But it ain't great, like most of the stuff in She Hulk, uh, if it's for. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, <clears throat> don't forget to like and subscribe. Every single subscriber counts in the early race, so if you enjoy this video, please subscribe. It's free and you can always change your mind later. Thank you for visiting Hash Talks. Yeah.